ഓപ്ഷൻഡിംഗ് ഷെയറിംഗ് മോഡ് കാണുന്നില്ല കാണുന്നുണ്ടോ ഇല്ല 
விட்டுட்டியோ காணுண்டப்பா ஒன்ஸ் <laughs> structure of intellect theory please off your audio and video to increase the quality of audio and video just presenting <coughs> gilford's structure of intellect the uh, gilford this particular theory is comes under the group of cognitive theory because information processing theory actually it is uh, focusing on the general factors of intelligence rather than the single factors according to this theory intelligence is a combination of multiple abilities rather than the single individual aspects which is relatively independent of uh, each other that means the our intelligence is a combination of many factors rather than the single factors okay i don't uh, i do not focusing on the some other points the next one uh, what are the important uh, theories important concepts including this theory one more one so excuse me the slide is changing then the uh, this this theory uh, describes the multiple intelligence in a um, uh this theory is um, explain intelligence in terms of three important operations or three important components first one is a contents contents means something which is uh, which is related with the nature of the material or information that we grasp that is the content that influence our uh, intelligence especially we receive the different types of information from our external world in different modes especially vis- visual auditory symbolic semantic and behavior and then what operations means what the respondent does that means we gather this information and this information is processed by our brain i already mentioned about that it is comes under the group of information theory because it give importance to the cognitive aspects of the uh, cognitive aspects which is explained in terms of the structure of fun- uh, functional nature of the brain then operation means uh, we think over this uh, available information and then which will help us to form the intelligence actually uh, these are the three uh, impo- uh, the different components of this particular intelligence cognition memory recording it's not memory memory recording memory retention divergent production convergent production and evaluation this is a duplication of the same figures same slides okay next one is a products products means um, is a form uh, it's a, what the process or what is the result of this particular function so it's known as the products that means uh, after the uh, processing of the information in the inside the brain some uh, information the some output is received by us like that is known as the product 
Yeah, there are, these are the different products. That means we gather the different types of information, and this information after the processing of the processing inside the brain, uh, it is uh, organized as a units, classes, relations, systems, transformation, and integration. It depends upon our intelligence. That means we yeah. use our brain brain functions in order to Some slides categorize this information. Can't yeah. Yeah. ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നോ i could not see the chat box during the class because the slide is presenting uh, you have to mention what is the problem you have is facing okay then the next one is evaluation uh, evaluation of this particular theory actually the gilford focusing on the general factor uh, less uh, focusing on the general factor and to ignore the correlation between the simple factors so that means right, so he does not give importance to the individual factors rather than the g, uh, g factor but the, he does not point. give importance to the g factor that means there are many other factors which contribute to our intelligence according to this particular theory see, and then uh, prediction uh, this, uh, this theory ma'am slide kaana pattilla ma'am slide kaana pattilla ma'am we are not able to see the slides Can you see? No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. No. One second. ിസിബിൾ ഗൈഡൻസ് <laughs> means uh, some other uh, he uh, gave importance to the what the operations or what is the activities which contribute to, rather than the, uh, the what are the contributions of individual factors in the intelligence okay, okay. then the next theory is the gardner's theory of multiple intelligence these theories is again uh, given details in the next unit intelligence according gardner he is a famous uh, psychologist who explains about the biopsychosocial potentials of the individual Uh, to process information that means our intelligence is depends upon our cultural setting and also the biopsychological aspects and then uh, he explains about what is the project zero project zero is a research team which is working on the at the <coughs> uh, harvard university it's a team uh, the at the beginning the team is basically focusing on the research in education and provided the intellectual home for the significant grouping of the research for researchers yeah he is being the part of this group 
and uh, it uh, help it is very helpful it was a uh, very helpful to him to uh, define the intelligence and some other aspects based on the uh, researches which is uh, going on i was going on uh, project zero the next one is a criteria related to intelligence we mentioned here is a potential for brain isolation uh, this gardner's theory clearly emphasizes on the what are the uh, different aspects related to brain injury after the brain injury the individual has the difficulty in uh, certain aspects of the intelligence but some other aspects of intelligence was uh, left intact uh, then here the his theory clearly defined what is the basic aspects behind this particular as uh, particular phenomena and then second point is that he give importance to the evolutionary aspects um his theory and the present of the core operations are clear and very uh, very well defined so the uh, it, uh, he also gave importance to the what is the uh, basic cognitive activities like a susceptibility to encoding retention and uh, reproduction of the memory and whatever that and then the most important aspects which are uh, focusing on this uh, developmental progression of this particular theory and then he explains about the, what is the important what is the importance of this particular the theory in the application level of the mental retardation and then uh, other exceptional groups are also defined clearly by using this particular theory and then supporting evidence shows that it has a wide reaching uh, implications in the experimental psychology and psychometric findings related to this particular theory and then uh, these are the most important aspects related to the intelligence is the linguistic intelligence logical mathematical intelligence musical intelligence bodily kinesthetic intelligence spatial intelligence interpersonal intelligence intrapersonal intelligence naturalistic intelligence and the newly formed intelligence as existential intelligence it is a recent form of intelligence which is explained by him and all other intelligence are very important in different areas of our life especially the first two that is the linguistic and logical mathematical intelligence is very specific for the school students they can uh, they can make use of their environment by using this particular type of intelligence and then musical intelligence and bodily kinesthetic intelligence is very special for the artistic or artistic skills and then uh, interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligence is a kind of intelligence which is related with a personal relationship that ensures our personal relationships and what are the aspects which help us to improve our personal interpersonal relationships and then naturalistic and existential intelligence is something which is related to aesthetic and philosophical sense of intelligence that's all we discuss in detail about the different aspects of intelligence ഞാൻ സ്വിച്ച് ഓവർ ചെയ്യണം എന്നേ പറയണം കേട്ടോ കാരണം വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ഒരുപാടുണ്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ഒന്ന് മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്ത് നമുക്ക് പോകാം എന്റെ വീഡിയോസിലേക്ക് സ്വിച്ച് ഓവർ ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ പറയാം ഓക്കെ ലിംഗ്വിസ്റ്റിക് ഇന്റലിജൻസ് ലിംഗ്വിസ്റ്റിക് ഇന്റലിജൻസ് സംതിങ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ദ പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇറ്റ് ഹെൽപ്പ് എസ് ദ ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽസ് ടു ഇറ്റ് ഹെൽപ്പ് എസ് ദ ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽസ് ടു ഷെയർ വൺസ് ഓൺ ഫീലിംഗ്സ് ടു അതേഴ്സ് ഇൻ വോബൽ ഫോർമാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓൾ and uh, these are the different types of intellectual skills especially related with the linguistic intelligence that are the this people with this uh, particular intelligence is high among the uh, lawyers lawyers uh, policemen doctors teacher writer and some other personalities like a uh, media or journalist and then logical intelligence means logical sense means it's a kind of intelligence which help us to logically relate with others and uh, critically evaluate everything that is seen uh, that is exposed to us and then it is a kind of intelligence which is related with the abstract reasoning that help us to manipulate the mathematical problems and also to uh, stick on the uh, certain specific intellectual skills in the arithmetic skill arithmetic problems here there are the, the people with this intelligence is uh, doctors and then mathematicians uh scientist and one more is uh, engineers and economist next one is a musical intelligence musical intelligence is a kind of intelligence which help us to sense the world around us with the, uh, the sounds or some other uh, tones like it is the capacity of the individuals to produce and create the and manipulate the musical sense we are we uh, familiarized with the, what is uh, what is the 
um, what is the concepts related with Beethoven? Like he is a famous mathematician, also musician. He is a genius musician. Actually, he is deaf, but he can sense the, the world around us with the with his uh, um, losing self sense. And then writer, singer, and uh, some other person has uh, this type of intelligence. And then bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which help us to use our whole body parts to for the display and construction of certain types of problem solving skills. Actually, the this skill is high among the soldiers, um, athletes, and doctors, dancers, sing, uh, and, um, surgeons, and policemen. And spatial intelligence, it is very important skill because it is related with something which is related with the images and pattern that help us to form, to transform this certain types of mental images into different shapes and sizes. Actually, this skill is high among the sportsman and then chess, uh, chess, chess player and then uh, writer and then the artistics, especially the is that is still on a shake of another number of engineers and uh, one more is uh, architects okay <clears throat> then next one is interpersonal intelligence this kind of intelligence help us to relate with the others uh, easily because it uh, help us uh, that means it is a uh, it make it help us to make a uh, comfortable relationship with others that is an interpersonal relationship interpersonal means uh, the relationship exists between two individuals that uh, uh, it is a kind of intelligence uh, to sense the um, the other person sense the feelings of other person it help us to sense the feeling of other person and also to communicate what he needs and uh, this the uh, politicians, uh, mathematicians, manager, salesman, or teacher. Uh, this high they they have high level of this type of intelligence. Next one is intrapersonal intelligence. Intra means something within oneself. That's uh, this kind of intelligence is, uh, which help us to understand one's feelings and also to share one's feelings to others effectively. That is uh, there are. Two types of intellectual skills uh, slide Maripoit and slave it up Maripoitana. Can you see? Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes or no, I cannot. Now it is visible, ma'am. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Next one is a naturalistic intelligence. That means uh, this type of intelligence is high among the uh, philosophers, psychologists, writers, and lawyers. Okay. Then the next one is a naturalistic intelligence, which help us to sense the world around us in aesthetic sense, aesthetic perspective. Uh, that means uh, the gardener, the farmer, and then painter and um, naturalistic. They have this uh, high type, this type of intelligence uh, on high level. And next one is existential intelligence, which is a recent form of intelligence, which is explained by him. It is other than the spiritual intelligence because it is uh, it helps us to under, uh, understand the world around us with the individual sensitivity, especially uh, regarding the existence. We are confused about the philosophical aspects like death and sense of uh, some other uh, feelings. Uh, here, the existential intelligence helps to sense the uh, help help us to answer these questions related to the existence of our uh, existence of our existence. Okay, uh, this type of intelligence is high among the uh, art, artistic skills, uh, skilled persons, and religious uh, persons. And then, what is the evolution of the evaluation of this particular theory? 
Gardner's theory has wide-reaching implications in education, especially the teaching and learning process. Besides this, it is very important for the mental dysfunction. I already mentioned about that. Certain um, neurological impairment, especially the brain injury, can be clearly defined in terms of in point of view of intelligence by using this particular theory. So it has a wide-reaching implications in the uh, mental uh, in de defining the mental functions. And then well, there are uh, even though it has many uh, criticisms, especially the seven. Um, it, uh, each of the seven multiple intelligences, uh, uh, cognitive, in defined in cognitive style, define our cognitive style. But uh, it does not uh, sing, uh, focusing on the single aspects. And then besides this, Hunt defines that uh, there are certain format, especially it uh, explains about the measurement scale of the individuals. Uh, that means uh, it is, this particular theory is not possible to uh, measure the, some aspects of our intelligence. These are the two important uh, criticisms. And then I think I add one more criticism is that it is uh, focusing on the different intellectual ability of the individual rather than the intelligence of the individuals rather than the individual abilities. And uh, Sternberg and Fresh, Fresh, French explains about that. Uh, this particular type of intelligence is not is, is uh, used to explain uh, explain the intelligence of the dog for physically uncoordinated persons. <clears throat> then the das is um, again uh, gave a particular ex uh, in the explanations. That means uh, it is very distinct to explain the uh, intelligence of the distinct talents and skills. It is one of the contribution and also it mentioned the positive aspects of the Gardner's theory. And the next theory is a Sternberg's triarchic theory of intelligence. This theory is put forwarded by the Robert Jeffrey Sternberg in 1985. He is a famous American psychologist and also psychometrician. He said that intelligence is a kind of ability of individuals to adapt to the surrounding world. That means we have to sense the world, what it just means, or uh, we have to sense the world around us, what is the demands of the society, society of the world. Uh, that help us to create our own intelligence and also to uh, use our intelligence. There are dif different types of intelligence according to him, componential intelligence, experiential intelligence, and contextual intelligence. And then components or analytical intelligence is a phase of first phases of this theory. It basically focuses on the how we solve the problems. That means uh, some people have the high level of intelligence, especially the superior intellectual ability. That means, uh, according to his theory, it means that it's a kind of analytic ability of the individuals to define the world around us and to find out the sensitivity, to find out the uh, possibilities of the particular problem. That means it's a kind of uh, analytical ability which the which help them to solve the new novel problems. Uh, it is because of uh, without the, uh, at the without the sake of uh, experiences. And then uh, this particular component, componential theory means there are uh, several other components. Uh, three components are mentioned here: knowledge acquisition component, meta or higher order component, and performance component. Knowledge acquisition means we gather the many informations for our, uh, for our uh, to solve the problem uh, by using our intellectual ability. That is the first one, knowledge acquisition component. That means we gather the different types of problems in order to solve the problem which is uh, exposed, uh, which is uh, confronted, confronted by us. Then meta or higher order component means uh, uh, before we are uh, dealing with the problem, we think over what are the different aspects or strategies or uh, some other aspects related to that problem. That is a meta component. That means we are planning to do, uh, planning how to do this, uh, how to solve this problem. And the next one is a performance component. It is the last level of component. That means we are going through the problem and uh, using, utilizing our own strategies to solve the problem and how the, we, uh, we make a plan before, the, before dealing with the problem and these plans are implemented during this period. Next one is experiential or creative facets of the experimental theory. Uh, experiment, experiential intelligence, that is experiential intelligence. It is otherwise known as the creative intelligence of the individuals. Creative means we are using the past experience creatively to solve the novel problems sometimes the experiential that means actually uh, we are when we are confronted with a novel problem we utilize so first we utilize to 
um, solve the problem with my our with um, our experience like by using our by uh, by the sake of our, our experience. That means the exponential. That is, we are saying is a kind of trial and error method. We uh, implementing a one technique to solve the current problem, and this, if it is not possible, we if it uh, reaches the error, we may uh, replace it with another strategy. That is the exponential intelligence. We does not reach the creative ability. Uh, directly, that means we make different trials to solve the problem. These trials are the exp experiments. That means a kind of experience experiments which are done. <clears throat> Next one is uh, the exponential uh, strategy has to uh, split into to split the role of uh, experience into parts, novelty and its automated automation. Uh, novelty means we experience different types. We have some experiences, but uh, when we are confronted with a novel problem, we use our own uh, experiences. That is uh, uh, actually sometimes we does not have enough experience to uh, solve the current problem. Uh, that means that we are not we are we had never experienced before the same problem. That means automatic responses means we, uh, without any uh, effort or without extra effort, we do the problem uh, that is the automation. Then it depends upon our intellectual ability. That's why that's very important. And next one is the contextual or practical basics of intelligence. Context means the uh, how we uh, tackle the problem, present problem. That is the contextual intelligence. It depends upon our, that is sweet smarts are known as the context and intellectual person. That is uh, the businessman to uh, street smarts. That means you know, we are confronted with a novel problem. That means we we respond according to the demands of the situation, not with the experiences or not with the uh, already have knowledge. That is the contextual intelligence is a kind of practical intelligence. Next one is there are three important processes of contextual intelligence. First one is adaptation. Second one is selection. In order to be, adaptation means it's a kind of a changing change over of our mind or there is a kind of flexibility to the uh, novel situation that is adaptation uh, the Carolians especially Malayalis have high level of adaptation skill because we uh, try to adapt with uh, every situation without making without interfering the, the existing ones the next one is a shaping. Shaping means changing oneself, one's behavior according to the demands of the situations or the uh, environments. That means we uh, some uh, something is uh, we find out something is error, and this error is corrected, and then we um, flex uh, our flexibility increases our capacity to adapt with this new surrounding situation. Next one is a selection. Selection means uh, completely does not completely. Um, remove or replace the existing situation just to completely you know alternative we adapt to the alternative situation selectively that means we concentrating on the some aspects of the situation and then um, transform that only and uh, does uh, ignore uh, some other ones then what are the important evaluations of this particular theory it's uh, actually it emphasizing on the process of the intelligence rather than the single aspects of the intelligence. Actually, it is a functional theory. It uh, gives importance to the functional aspects of the intelligence rather than the uh, what are the different types of intelligence or structural aspects of the intelligence. And then there is a most important positive aspect of this particular intelligence. And then second theory is uh, it is uh, it views emotions as distinct from the intelligence. Clearly defined what is the difference between the emotion and intelligence. We have heard about what is meant by the emotional intelligence and what is the intelligence. It is extremely different terms or terminologies. That means it has definite meaning. Each one of them has its own concept. And then Gordon uh, Fred, Fredson expl uh, explains about the unempirical nature of the triarchic theory. It, it, it actually it, uh, ignores some other aspects, especially the factor analysis. It basically focuses on the factor analysis and some other aspects are ignored by this particular theory. And then thus, JP thus criticized that meaningfulness to treat the creativity as cognitive ability. That means uh, it uh, consider the intelligence, uh, uh, creativity as a, cre is a creative uh, test, uh, is a creative ability. But it uh, uh, actually the creative ability has to be uh, measured by using the openness method. 
actually uh, this theory does not uh, focusing on this particular uh, openness or psychological openness to creativity so it is uh, based on this theory creativity cannot be easily re uh, measured then the first module is complete again the next one is the slide is visible yes sir yes, okay then first uh, next uh, module uh, block 2 uh, yes uh, next unit is unit 3 measurement of intelligence we mentioned about what are the different aspects of the intelligence here we are focusing on the measurement of intelligence some other theories we are already mentioned about the different theories this theory is uh, described in detail in this unit first one is a theoretical background of the measurement of intelligence are the kaanunnilla can you hear um, Slide, 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 Is it visible? Unit 3, Block 2, Measurement of Intelligence. Uh, this theory, this uh, unit basically focuses on the intelligence, intelligence, different theories of intelligence. I'll just mention what are the different theories, but uh, some theories are in detail uh, in this chapter. First one is... Uh, the theoretical background of measurement of intelligence. Uh, the first one, general factor theories of intelligence. Uh, basically, the, for it, uh, this general factor theories are focused on the general intelligence. We are already mentioned about the different theories of intelligence, especially the monarchic theory, two factor theory, level theory. These are the different types of theories. And then first one is a unitary or monarchic theory of intelligence. This theory is proposed by the Alfred Binney and uh, Simon. Don't uh, so, you know, Alfred Binet, uh, his name is Binney. He is silent. Okay. Uh, according to him, the intelligence is a single factor rather than the multiple factors of intelligence because this is the, this is the first theory which is formulated by him. And then two factor there, there is a first theory, and the second one is the two factor theory of intelligence. This theory is put forwarded against the uh, first theory, monarchic theory of intelligence. Uh, this theory is pro uh, proposed by the British psychologist Charles Spearman. And it consists of two factors, S factor and G factor. S factor means the specific intelligence of the individual. All individual does not have the S, all S factors, but some S factors are clear and uh, clearly defined. And G factor means the general intellectual ability of the individual, that means the general knowledge of individuals, uh, which is uh, clearly defined. And then uh, so actually it, G factor is responsible for our intelligence. Here there is a uh, clear cut uh, of the general intelligence according to the particular theory. We have different uh, S factors and all S factors may not be sure in our Intelligence, so some as factor clearly defined, but the general factor, all these factors, the combination of S factors are the 
general factor, that means the general knowledge of individuals. And it depends upon our previous experiences and exposure to the, uh, the environment. Uh, that means we have to uh, expose the individuals, especially the children, to the environment. That is very important for our intellectual skill. Play is the most important aspect which helps us to, uh, to interact with the surrounding situation and interact with their peers. It, uh, it helps us to increase their interpersonal intelligence. And besides this, again, emotional intelligence is affected by the uh, by the child to the play. It is very important the uh, child uh, sh should have an exposure should have, should have an exposure to the different uh, situations. And the next one is the level theory. Level theory is proposed by Arthur Jensen. According to him, there are two levels of intelligence. First one is associative learning. That means we get uh, if, if it's a lot of memory later on. I explain about what is meant by the associative learning. Here then. Associative learning means we uh, associate a word with the, uh, some other words which is uh, familiar to us. That is uh, associative learning. It is one of the most important skills of individuals to uh, associate the world around us. And then there is an anagram. It is an example of associative learning. There is an anagram. It does not have any meaning. But the first one does not have any meaning. I think uh, the second one has a uh, correct meaning. Can you? find out the second, uh, second one um, by arranging the letters on the second one uh, we get a meaningful word this uh, i i don't uh, share or i don't uh, ask you uh, just um, i mango is second one that is the mango mango has a meaning the child easily accepted the second word rather than the second first word because the, uh, these are the two anagrams. Actually, the first anagram does not have any meaning, so it is very really difficult to um, restore in our memory, store in our memory. That is associative learning. The second word is easy because we arrange these words in different perspective and then we get the meaning of that word easily because we have a familiarity with that word. <clears throat> That is associative learning. Then the second one is the level two. Level two is the cognitive competence of the individual. It's a kind of higher order skill. That means we transform everything into an uh, effective output. That is like a very specific capacity of the individual. We, uh, we derive different types of information from our surrounding world. And these informations are organized accordingly, according, according, according to the demands of the situation and also our own needs. That is level two. And then general intellectual capacity of the individual consists of the abstract reasoning, comprehension, clear direction of the thoughts, purposeful thinking, self-corrective judgment. That means our intelligence is depends upon all these factors. That means we get different types of information from our surrounding world. And this information are processed many times before we are in, uh, reaching the correct conclusions. That means that these are the processes that are uh, ongoing in our uh, brain. The next theory is a multi-factor theory. Even though all the theories are all important, I am not Multi-factor, all the other important. Then the multi-factor theory. Uh, actually, this theory neglects the existence of general factor. That means the multi-factor. There are different single individual factors, and these individual factors, uh, the combination of these individual factors, contribute to our intelligence. That means uh, general factor is a kind of intelligent intellectual capacity. Uh, actually, it is a combination, but uh, it uh, has uh, limited capacity too. Then the second one is the, the most important multi-factor theories are Thurston's primary mental abilities, otherwise known as the group factor theory of intelligence. Second one is the structure of intellect model. Third one is the Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. And then Thurston's primary mental abilities and group factor theory of intelligence. This theory is proposed by the American psychologist Louis Thurston. Uh, he and his associate, and then he, he identified the different groups of intelligence. These groups of intelligence is a contribution of specific factors of intelligence. All this, the combination of these group factors, which should determine our intelligence according to his theory. The first one is a verbal factor. The second one is a verbal fluency, numerical factor, spatial visualization, memory factor, reasoning, perceptual speed. And then verbal factor is the kind of intellectual skill of the individuals to understand the fluency of words or the ideology related with the word verbal terms. And that is the ability of understanding the ideas which is expressed by us and also expressed by others. 
uh, here it emphasizes on it is comes from the group of information theory because it emphasizes on the func how the function of the brain. <clears throat> then word fluency word fluency means the fluency of ideologies and fluency of words uh, this uh, people with this intelligence uh, especially the writers poets uh, orators uh, have this type of intelligence that is a word fluency uh, they uh, respond to the different types of uh, environmental situations and uh, with uh, their verbal skills so that is a word fluency Next one is a numerical factor, which is uh, related with some, uh, some kind of arithmetic. Total speed and accuracy is the most important one. That means we have uh, some people have a high level of uh, numerical skill. Uh, that means they can manipulate the word symbols and uh, uh, ideologies related to the numerical terms. Then, spatial intelligence is a kind of intelligence which are okay. all these things are mentioned earlier times. But um, just mentioned what it is um, to mentally manipulate and visualize the geometric relationships and the similar abilities. Then memory ability is the capacity of the individual to process, store, and retrieve the information according to the demands of the situation. So we are already mentioned about what is enable and what is the uh, rot memory. It's a kind of associative memory that means when we expose it to a narrative, we think over the anagram many times and this, pro this process is going on in our brain. After the brain processing, we get a correct solution to the problem. That is, we can retrieve the information which is already stored in our memory. In our memory. We are familiarized with the word, what is the word, uh, word mango. If it is uh, rearranged in different orders or sequence, we get the meaning of that word and by easily uh, rearrange the words. No, uh, but so letters and then reasoning reasoning is the ability of the individuals to find the rules and relations related with the slide uh, okay presenting okay ma'am and the pinch the pinch the side live on the orators separate pinch the pinch Full screen Back and forth Let us proceed. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Come back. Next one is the perception scheme. <laughs> it is the capacity of the individuals to grasp the information different according to the demands of the situation. We, uh, we uh, get a different types of information, and these informations are categorized or organized according to the demands and, and differences and similarities. It's known as the perception speed. Some individuals have a sensitivity to different types of information easily other than the others. And uh, Thurston's constructed a test, oh, which is the oh, test oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 Illa ma'am karna nila. Oh, 
part of that. ണെന്നുണ്ടോ എനിക്ക് വിഷയത്തിൽ കാണില്ല കേട്ടോ നിങ്ങൾ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് കാണില്ല കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല മൈക്ക് ആവശ്യമില്ല ഇല്ലപ്പോ എപ്പോഴും കാണുന്നില്ല ഇല്ല എനിക്കിവിടെ പ്രസന്റിംഗ് നോട്ടാ വരുന്നത് കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല ണെന്നുണ്ടോ ഇല്ല 
കാണുന്നത് എന്താ ചാർജ്സി വരുന്നത് എന്റെ മോനാണല്ലോ ജൻസ് <laughs> 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 Next one is the Guilford's model of structure of intellect, SI model of intellect. It is very important one. Uh, this theory is proposed by J.P. Guilford. According to him, uh, we are already mentioned about what is the different aspects of Guilford theory. Here we are mentioned in details. There are three important operations or three dimensions of intelligence according to his theory. So, uh, he, uh, he observed the intelligence is a uh, cube like structure it has uh, different dimensions each dim dimensions representing the different aspects or different components of intelligence there is a first one is operations contents and products so there is a figure or the picture on the right side of the uh, screen and then that is uh, this is the uh, multiple dimension of the intelligence according to his theory the first uh, uh screen first part of the or first side of the uh, cube represents the products and second one is outermost part is the operations and third one is the contents so these are the different and there are small units of that means is is uh, it's our intelligence that means that some components of intelligence are grouped together to form our intelligence these components are uh, comes under the group of three dimensions that is the products car products operations and uh, contents that's all here there are clearly defined what are the different aspects of intelligence in two in three different dimensions and then what is the first one is operations we are already mentioned about what is operation that is how the respondents do then the, these are the different dimensions of the operations uh, that means the combination how the individual think optimistic and pessimistic thinking can be clearly defined by using the cognitive as uh, ability of the, of the individual some people focus on the pessimistic thinking while some others uh, focusing on the optimistic thinking style it depends upon on, on our intellectual ability that means how we perceive the world around us that means uh, the that means the contents which is based on our contents and then uh, memory recording means we receive the different types of information according to our needs or according to our wishes that means memory recording memory retention means we uh, receive the different types of uh, information this information may not be uh, retained in our memory that means it depends the retention is depends exclusively depends upon our interest or our needs and then divergent and convergent production we are already mentioned what is uh, we uh, there is a, some uh, examples um, on the screen later i don't mention about what is uh, divergent and convergent theory thinking in this aspect and next one is evaluation evaluation means we evaluate all the information which is received based on our experiences and our and on our intellectual ability next one is the anagram there is a it's a kind of uh, creative thinking there are there are different anagrams anagram means the rot uh, rot memory that means rot words uh, it does not have a meaning actually this anagram the sequence of this anagram does not have any meaning but we can rearrange it into into in order to form a meaningful word the first word can you assume think assume cheyanu mettanenge parayan njan just one vaichu ponatta illinge assume cheyan samayilla 
ഇതൊരു റീഅറേഞ്ച്ഡ് ഓർഡർ ആണ് നമ്മുടെ ക്രിയേറ്റിവിറ്റി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഇതിനനുസരിച്ചിരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ തിങ്കിങ് പാറ്റേൺ തന്നെയാണ് അവിടെ പറയുന്നത് പ്രത്യേകിച്ചും ഡൈവേർജൻ തിങ്കിങ് പാറ്റേൺ പല രീതിയിൽ നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിച്ചിട്ട് ഒരു കൺക്ലൂഷനിലേക്ക് എത്തുകയാണ് നമ്മളിവിടെ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ഡൈവേർജ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഡൈവേർജൻ തിങ്കിങ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് വേർഡ് ദർ ഇസ് എ ആൻസർ ഓഫ് ദീസ് വേർഡ്സ് ഡൈവേർജൻ ഇന്റലിജൻസ് ഫ്ലെക്സിബിലിറ്റി പ്രോട്ടോടൈപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റിവിറ്റി ആക്ച്വലി ദി വി യു ആർ നോട്ട് ഫെമിലിയർ വിത്ത് ദീസ് വേർഡ്സ് so it is not easy to you to find out the word actual word actually there this anagram yan pettana kanichu kodukumba kutiyala pettana dress cheyunnathu flexibility mathra bakkulla word ella athra pettana kittarilla next one is a contents contents means the nature of the materials or the information uh, which is used to process our info uh, our process in our memory then the, that means we gather the different types of information based on this different means or sense modalities sensory modalities and this informations are processed in our brain that is a, it is a being part of our intellectual ability here we are mention about what are the different operations which are going on in our brain and then products means the what is the out of product or the what is the result of this particular process is the product the information processed by the respondent that is a product after the analysis of the information we get different uh, meanings and different we can gather it or organize it in different perspective that is known as the products and that means according to his theory the, there are different dimensions that he mix, mentioned uh, the first one is uh, operations contains uh, five uh, five units and then Uh, contents contains uh, six units and then again the products contains five units the total number of uh, <clears throat> components are the 180 your text uh, mention about 150 factors actually 180 factors are the uh, that means ningal the text through old aidond 150 vare ettittullu 180 factors under the next theory is a gardner's theory of multiple intelligence this is proposed by the howard gardner it is very famous uh, famous figure in psychology uh, he is very famous figure in psychology and gardner proposes that uh, we have different types of intelligence that means there eight different types of intelligence uh, these intelligence are very specific for our mental lang- that is uh, mental language it is entitled as a mental languages that is very important for us because uh, how the intellectual respond to the surrounding situation is depends upon this mental language this is a kind of intelligence and then he explains about the different eight type of intelligence linguistic intelligence musical intelligence logical mathematical intelligence visual and spatial intelligence bodily kinesthetic skills personal a or interpersonal intelligence and then personal b or interpersonal intelligence and naturalistic intelligence here there this is a diagram the diagram is not visible actually uh, but uh, it represents the different types of intelligence then uh, here recently uh, uh, added one more uh, type of intelligence is a ninth one uh, ninth intelligence is existential intelligence we are already mentioned about what is existential in- oh, sorry in that they are talking about the existential intelligence is something which is related with our existence <coughs> next one is a triarchic theory of intelligence triarchic theory of intelligence is given by the robert j stenberg according to him intelligence is a kind of adaptation skill of the individuals to the environment that means we have to first we have to encounter what are the demands of the individual uh, society or the what are the demands of the environment that first we have to consider and after it we respond uh, accordingly by changing our behavior that is our intellectual ability uh that is uh, there are three basic types of intelligence here mentioned compositional or analytical intelligence experiential creative or contextual or practical intelligence and then the same repetition is seen but in details uh, details are here in the in this chapter <clears throat> analytical intelligence is a kind of intelligence to solve the problem then the, there are three important components knowledge acquisition meta or higher order performance and then uh, i don't mention about it and next one is vernon's hierarchical theory of intelligence this theory is proposed by the philip ward vernon uh, vernon uh, he is a british psychologist and according to him uh, he actually he uh, used the combination of the general factors uh, that is uh, mentioned by the spearman charles spearman that is two factor theory and the multiple factor theory uh, he borrowed the concepts of these two theories uh, for the and uh, for the developing of to develop his uh, theory his own theory is a hierarchical level of theory 
according to his level uh, level theory or hierarchical level theory there are different levels the first level is the topmost level it is a general intelligence of the individual it is a pyramid like structure is given by him and then at the top on the top of the uh, pyramid uh, general intelligence that is mentioned is the general intelligence it is the source of intelligence of the individual uh, to be uh, adapted with the surrounding situation and the next level the next level major factor theories of intelligence that is verbal numerical educational capacity of the individuals he mentioned is the v v e is the uh, next level uh, v e d v e d that is the next level there is a next uh, the, it is also comprises the uh, practical and mechanical spatial physical intelligence of the individuals and then the next uh, lower level is the minor group factors uh, that is the major factors of the intelligence and bottom level is a specific here there is an order vernon's hierarchical theory of intelligence the topmost level is the specific opposite pyramid pyramid top in the general out of the major uh, group factor and minor group factor and then specific. But the number of tree diagram on about the other. So the specific factors are grouped together in order to form the major minor group factors and minor uh, group factors are combined to form the major group factor and then uh, it reaches the general factor. Actually, the brain allows the minor is the sensory nerves. And these sensory nerves are joined together to form the spinal nerves, and spinal nerves are combined to form the uh, sensory kind of uh, next uh, compartments of nerves, like where, then the spinal nerves, and again, and then we reach the brain. Then he basically focuses on the general, uh, what is the general intelligence of the individual, and also he focuses on the individual differences. In the, approximately six percentage of the individuals has a attributable genetic factors for the intelligence the parental intelligence is very influential for the intelligence of the next generation we are already mentioned uh, there is a concept like flying effect flying effect is an intelligence effect that means uh, the every generation has a gradual increase of the intellectual intellectual capacity because of the in exposure um, major exposing exposing factors uh, existing in the uh, recent times <clears throat> at the recent times next one is the history of mecha measurement of intelligence the the first um, yeah this particular part uh, explains about the, what are the different types of intelligent test first intelligent test it is not considered as intelligent test it is a mental test it is given by sir francis galton he is a cousin of charles darwin he borrowed the concepts of the darwin and he is very inspired by the darwin's contributions then from uh, based on this uh, darwin's uh, evolution of evolutionary theory uh, he formulated the first mental test and then later on uh, this test is very important because uh, it explains about the sensory discrimination power of the individuals and then uh, the next one is a simple intelligence test. Just uh, flashy. You will card the law. Slide card the law. Yes, ma'am. Card the law. Yes, ma'am. Uh, second, you will slide card the law. You will just mark it. Slide mark it. You will just enjoy it. Okay. Okay. Uh, which leg is uh, larger, left or right? Can you see? Paranyan it down, a regular algorithm. It is a simple test of intelligence. We are confused. Actually, there are. Eh? Eh, right or left? It seems right. Right, ma'am. Right, right. right. Left, ma'am. Left. It is, uh, it is a simple test of intelligence. Right, right. right. Yeah, it is a simple yeah, test yeah. of intelligence. Okay, it is a simple test of intelligence. That means we are confused about it. There are two slides, sir. Now, one is uh, actually the game. The, there is a one slide. Uh, it's one leg is uh, less in size, and the other one is equal, almost equal. And then these uh, under slides, uh, alternative item of the engineering, we are confused which leg is uh, longer. It's a simple test of intelligence. Actually, the people with this uh, disability, in, in the, intellectual disability, cannot mention which is which leg is longer. 
it is a simple test of intelligence then we go to the next details of the intelligence test first mental test is uh, it is given by the sir francis galton but the mental test the term mental test is first coined by the american psychologist james mckean cagle in 19 in 1890 and then uh, what is the important contributions of the alfred binet alfred binet is the most important figure in psychology who explains about the uh, the most important the first intelligence test it is termed as an intelligence test for, but sir francis galton's uh, test, uh, test is termed as a mental test it is not as in uh, it, it actually um, measure the mental ability but uh, it is not considered to be as a intelligent intelligence test the first contribution of alfred binet he is the first uh, psychologist who tried to um, develop a particular test for intellectual ability to measure intellectual ability and then uh, he is conjoined with or is in association with simon uh, simon in 1905 Uh, this particular test is developed in order to find out the special in, uh, need of the individuals children uh, who have the subnormality and then the its revision is uh, seen in many times the first revision in 1908 to measure the normal children actually the first test is developed for the subnormal children but the later or the in 1908 the test is revised for is it is especially adding some more points to Uh, measure the intellectual ability of the normal children and then again its revision is uh, in 1911 and last revision in 1916 with a title terman stanford binet scale the last revision is the most important one because it uh, has many uh, positives uh, as compared to the other types of test then the most important advantages of this test is simplicity it is very simple to define the intelligence of the individual it is easy to administer and also the calculation is comparatively easy and then standardization procedure is also very rigorous of type and then inclusion criteria is exclusively defined in manuals each test has its own manual that means how the so namlu sadharana idil oru electronic uparanangal vaangikkanumundengil adinu manual undavallo adu pole thanne all the test has a manual it defines everything about the uh, particular test and what are the uh, specific criterions and how the samples are taken and what are the relevant criteria or norms related to this test all the details are given in the manual this test also given uh, the has a manual with the describing everything in detail about this particular test and then next one is a concept of intelligence uh, concept of iq <clears throat> iq is a term which is coined by the william stewart and iq is a ma by ca into 100 ma is the mental age of the individuals that means the it is always taken as 16 that means how after the 16 there is a gradual changes with respect to the experiences but now uh, hereditary changes are not possible after 16 years of age that means uh, so we take it as a mental age 16 chronological age is the actual age of the individual the individual has a having the 56 is the age and then this the this is the chronological age of the individual but the mental age is always taken as 16 then um, world war first and army and uh, army personnel selection it is one of the group test it is uh, during the world war 1 Uh, in 1917 a committee of american association formed a test under the leadership of Dob robert m yorks this actually this test is uh, devised to uh, segregate the personnel for the army selection and then army there are two types of uh, army test alpha and um, uh, b army alpha and army beta test it say comes under the group of the group test actually uh, it, it is exclusively for the selection of the army alpha is exclusively for the selection of army personnel it is a language test it is uh, basically it is um, devised for the illiterate people but the second one is uh, exclusively for the illiterate people it is administered among the illiterate people because it is a non language performance test <clears throat> it is uh, and then uh, major intelligence test the tests are classified on the basis of the administrative conditions so we can classify the test as individual test or group test verbal and non uh, non verbal test individual test when we administer the individual test uh, to collect the informations regarding the specific abilities of the individual that means if it is uh, administered among the large group we cannot uh, notify the 
specific characteristics of the individuals during the uh, testing time. So the individual test is administered to a single individual at a time. That is a specific test because we have to collect the maximum information regarding the uh, every aspect of the intellectual ability of the individual in terms of in, uh, intelligence testing. <clears throat> And then group test, it is a, uh, the same problem. When the people uh, facing the same problem, uh, that means we does not a pointing on the single individual, then, uh, then we can administer the group, group test. It, it help us to collect the larger data uh, about the different individuals from at a time. That is the group test is administered among a group in order to collect the data, in the, uh, data based on a particular target or task. That is the army alpha test is an example of the group test because it is widely used. So other than the individual test quality based idol information on the individual test. Then there is a flow chart of the intelligence test. There are individual and there are two types of tests, individual test and group test. Individual test is again divided into verbal test and performance test. Verbal tests make use of the verbal terms, terminologies, whereas the performance test uh, instructions are given verbally, but the uh, content does not have any use of language. And then group test is again divided into verbal and non-verbal test. Verbal test, you make use of verbal items, but in case of non-verbal test, it does not make use of the language. Then uh, there, there are other divisions of the test, verbal and non-verbal test. We are already mentioned about that the verbal test is exclusively based on the language based test. So the mode of communication is based on the language and then uh, we convey the instructions uh, through uh, verbal format and, and uh, information are taken into it is a, actually it is a paper pencil test. We use the paper and pencil and the instructions are given verbally and the information has to be report, recorded by the subject as verbally. As verbally. And then a non-verbal test. Here there is a uh, uh, diagram or there is a picture on the right side of the screen. We can see that the subject has to select which one is apt to this missing one. <clears throat> okay, there is uh, some options at the top of the bottom of the uh, picture. Uh, the, it can, the subject has to be selected the alternative from the alternative answer from the given alternatives okay the non-verbal test it does not make use of language instructions are given in the language in in the verbal format but the uh, test does not contain any kind of language is there a language on the law normally instruction for a me that I'm gonna correct answer on the other country we can not from our phone some sorry can allow you see any of the well in the book of the material language on the other then again the one more test. It is a test widely used to identify the mental disability of the individuals. Mental retardation can be discriminated by using this particular test. There are different symbols or the uh, diagrams and then the subject has to choose one. And the next one is a performance test. It does not make use of any language. Instructions are first described, but the, um, the whole test does not have any kind of verbal format or make use of verbal format here. There are different types of blocks. Each uh, side of the block is painted in different styles. And then the subject has to uh, arrange the blocks in, in, according to the uh, given picture. That is the performance test. It's a Cox blocks design test. It is one of the, uh, the image of the image uh, is um, Cox blocks test. The image of Cox blocks test is given here. Uh, actually, we have to, we does not have any familiarity with the intellectual intelligence test. It may interfere with our intellectual ability. Then the next one is just to mention what is cultural fair, culture free and culture specific test. Some tests are uh, contains these items that are exclusively uh, related to their culture. That is a culture fair test. And this test, if you want to know the it is a culture fair test because this it has a cultural norms, but uh, these cultural norms are applicable to every culture. That is the culture fair test. Uh, in case of culture free test, it is this test is prepared by the KTEL. It contains free of culture. There is any cultural values are included in this test. So that is a culture free test. And then culture specific test, it contains items that are exclusively specific to a particular culture or subculture. There is a uh, word. Um, can you see the slide? Yes, ma'am. 
Oh, and there are meaningful words dog, car, cat, bird, fish. The subject has to be reported which one is the least important for them. Uh, that are, otherwise, uh, which is the most important for them. Uh, it depends upon our cultural values. That means uh, some people, uh, especially Japanese, they feel that they uh, reported that fish is very important because they are familiar with the fish or fish food, fish, fish agents or fish, uh, some other, some uh, of But in case of uh, an urban area, children living in an urban area, they may uh, find out the car, it is very, very important. It depends upon our cultural value and exposure to the cultural aspects. That means the culture specific test. It depends upon the culture specific. The, uh, that is the culture fair and culture, free, culture specific test. Next one is the types of intelligence scales. There are different types of intelligence scale mentioned on this chapter, on this unit. Stanford Binet test, Wechsler intelligence scale, Kaufman assessment scales. Stanford Binet test, it is the first test. This test is devised by the term in, uh, in the, with the help of the Maud Murrell in 1937. Actually, the Stanford Binet scale is after the uh, death of the Stanford. The scale is devised by the help of the other the Stan Stanford. After the death of the Binet, Stanford revises the test uh, <clears throat> with the help of the um, Maud Merrill. Uh, it is termed as the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. Okay. The revision included two alternative forms, L form and H form. Actually, this test consists of 129 items. And then uh, this particular test is revised a third time uh, by Merrill and named as the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. It consists of 142 items and then four from L to M. But the some items are discarded and some others are included. And then fourth revision of the same test is given, SP4. It is very important, 1986. It is a retained, um, much of the re uh, items are retained in this test, LM edition, form LM edition. It is very important test because it has many advantages apart from the other types of test. And then the first one is a hierarchical model of intelligence is very, uh, basically uh, are clearly defined. That means it, uh, it is basically based on the uh, hierarchical model of intelligence. And then there are four main areas are mentioned here. Verbal reasoning, abstract visual reasoning, quantitative reasoning, and short term memory. That means all almost important cognitive abilities are mentioned clearly, and uh, the score also sh uh, share the some important aspects of our cognitive abilities. And then Stanford Binet, the last revision is SB5. It is significantly different from the significantly different from the SB4 with regard to the theoretical aspects because this test is basically focuses on the neurological aspect. Luria, uh, Luria, there are two important constructs. Actually, it is uh, assess the intellectual ability of the individual between the age group of 2 to 89 years of age. Uh, it is an individual test because individual. And we are already mentioned about what is the individual test. It is individually administered test. It contains 10 subscales with a verbal and non-verbal format. Your text explains uh, what, uh, what are the scoring procedures, but I does not uh, mention about it. You have to read it out. And there are three important areas here. Uh, general cognitive ability, verbal and nonverbal intelligence, and then CH, five CHC, uh, CHC factors. These CHC factors are uh, fluid intelligence, uh, knowledge, quantitative reasoning, visual and spatial processing, working memory. That means all the cognitive, important cognitive abilities are mentioned here, and its a, a neurological um, aspects are also clearly defined in this test. Then the next, next, next test is a Wechsler intelligence scale. It is very important test because in recent, at recent times, we are depending upon the Wechsler intelligence scale for, scale for, uh, for the measurement of the intelligence of the individuals. And then first Wechsler, David Wechsler is uh, his proponent proposed this theory and intelligence. Uh, there is a most important definition. It is very important definition. I uh, give the definition at the next slide. Uh, this uh, test is given in 1939. Uh, the, it, uh, uh, it revised many times, uh, especially this test is uh, devised for adults nine, 16 to 90 years of age, for school children, 
six, six to sixteen years of age for preschoolers to two and a half to seven years of age. And there are different types or form of tests are here. Uh, each test is specialized for the each category. And here there is a flow chart. Uh, Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale table on a tabular column. And then uh, Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale ways. Uh, just especially for the adult uh, measurement of the adult. And Weschler Bellevue Scale in 1939. Weschler 1955 basis, basis uh, came into existence and was came into existence in 1955. Base R base R means the base revised reform in 1981 and base third revised reform 1997 and base fourth revised revised reform 2008. Now we are depending upon base four and then Weschler intelligence scale for children. It is exclusively in a specialized for children. It consists of different types of items that are very specific to children. And uh, first one is the 1946 uh, Weschler Bellevue second and BISC 1949. BISC are uh, revised from 1974. Uh, third revision is 1991 and fourth revision is 2003. And 2003 version is uh, came into uh, is uh, now used. Uh, Weschler preschool and primary scale for children. Um, WPPSI 1967 and uh, first revision in 1989 and second third revision is 2002. And then Weschler scale as uh, Weschler defined the intelligence as a global capacity to think rationally, to act purposefully, and to deal effectively with the environment. Uh, that is, Weschler mentioned about how the individual adapt to his environment. That means we have to identify the demands of the environment, and then uh, we have to uh, collect the uh, purposefully deal our uh, <clears throat> novel problems. That is, uh, it is very important definition. You have to read down, uh, study it, because uh, it, uh, in experimental point of view, it is very important. Any questions? After completing the whole topic, I just uh, uh, come to the screen to share some points. And structure of the ways four. It is released out in 2008. It consists of 10 sub scores or sub. It is a battery of tests. It consists of the different sub tests. All the independent subtests are taken into consideration, and then whole test scores are considered to be as a intellectual ability of the individual. It measures the intellectual ability of the individuals. And besides this, index scores are given. It is instead of verbal and performance scales. And then these are the different areas of intellectual ability, which is mentioned by using the Weschler intelligence scale. Verbal test, similarities, vocabulary, information subtest, performance or perceptual reasoning index, comprehension index, block design, matrix design, reasoning, visual puzzles. And then indices and scales, and then four basic indices, index, indexes. Uh, first one is the verbal comprehension index, VCR, perceptual reasoning index, PRI, working memory index, VMI, processing speed index, PSI. That means the, it is a uh, subtest of the base, and it is scores, it uh, gave independent scores. That is, these independent scores are the verbal comprehensive index. Okay. And then the four areas that are mentioned here, these independent scores are taken. It is a battery of tests. It consists of more than one test. So uh, in some situations, we does not make use of old test. Uh, we just are uh, pointing off the sum test in order to uh, collect the information regarding the intellectual ability of the individual. All tests are not going to be able to do it. Then we are going to be able to do the measurement of the intellectual ability. Then the two broad scores are also generated, full scale IQ, FS IQ, general ability index, GAI, uh, based on the uh, six subtest. And then subtest, uh, these are the main impo important verbal comprehension consists of the several subtest, similarities, vocabulary, information, comprehension. And this, these are the independent tests. 
and it has the independent schools. These independent schools have to be taken and uh, there is a uh, diagram chart and this we have to enter the each scores on the diagram chart and all the scores are calculated and this calculated score, the total grant score, total or grant score is taken as a, taken into consideration for the evaluation purpose. Okay. And then next one is a perceptual reasoning index. It consists of the subtests like block design, matrix reasoning, visual puzzles, picture completion, figure wings. And the next one is a working memory index. It is a digit span, arithmetic, letter, number, sequence. And then next one is a processing uh, speed index. It includes three tests, simple search, coding, cancellation. Can uh, cancellation. <coughs> And then in, uh, interpretation. Actually, the Wessler intelligence scale is interpreted. The scores of the Wessler intelligence scale is interpreted based on the deviation IQ. What is meant by the deviation IQ? You can tell me experiment especially based on And then deviation IQ is are based on the person's relative standing in his or her age group. That is, deviation IQ is a concept which is given by the Wessler, and he tried to understand the Intellectual ability, intellectual ability of the individual when comparing with the group norms. That is already then for the test is administered among the large population and then based on the um, samples taken from the population, we calculated and uh, calculate after the processing of processing and synthesis of the scores, we get a norm. And then uh, individual score is compared with the norm score, that is the deviation IQ of the individual. <clears throat> then last point for portion is the Kaufman assessment scale. Kaufman assessment battery for children was developed in 1970 and 90, early in 1980s. Actually, it is published in 1983. It is also a battery of tests. That battery in Mana, it consists of many other subtests, and each subtest are into, give individual scores, and this indiv individual independent scores are taken into consideration for the uh, calculation of the grand score. Then second version of the KB, KABC uh, and, uh, was published in 2004 and it is exclusively for the age range of uh, 3 to 18 years of age. And the test measures basically these three different dimensions, learning, sequential processing of the individual, simultaneous processing of the individual, planning, uh, verbal knowledge. That means actually it is focusing on the verbal abilities like memory. And then KB, uh, KABC2, it is a, it a, actually, <clears throat> it is, uh, explains about the neurological aspects of the intelligence uh, uh, based on the theoretical aspects of Luria, neurological model, and Cagel's horn carroll model. These two important theoretical bases are used to form the KABC. And standard score and scale scores, it has two global scores. Uh, MPI and FCI both are standard scores with mean of 100 and standard deviation of 50. And then Kaufman, uh, Kaufman Ad Adolescent and Ad Intelligent Scale. It is developed by the Alan S. Kaufman and Nadine L. Kaufman. Actually, it is an individual test. It is administered individually. Uh, age range is 11 to 85 years of age plus age. Uh, the death were a and then it has a strong uh, theoretical basis. We are already mentioned about that neurological impairment can be easily clear, uh, defined by using this particular test because it has a ground theoretical basis. That is Horn Cagel's concept of fluid and crystallized intelligence, and Luria's Gordon's no notion of frontal planning ability, Piastri's construct of formal operational thought. These are the basic constructional uh, theoretical aspects uh, behind this particular theory. Uh, and the test is consists of uh, crystallized scale and fluid scale. Crystallized scale means we have some informations regarding the different aspects of the intelligence or different uh, different aspects of the environment. These informations are already stored, but in fluid scale we have we are open and we adapt to the surrounding situation depends depend upon our intellectual ability. That means the test has a possibility to uh, to uh, to express our free answers freely without censoring. That is a free uh, fluid intellectual ability. Actually, the creativity can be easily measured by using the fluid intelligent intellectual ability of the individual. That means, if we have a caption, 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 we have a caption,
ഹ്യൂമർസെൻസ് വേണോ അതോ കുറച്ചും കൂടി തീരട്ട് ക്ലാസ് ബുക്സ് വേണോ നമ്മൾ എങ്ങനെ ചിന്തിക്കുന്ന ആ രീതിയിലായിരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ ക്യാപ്ഷൻ വരുന്നത് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് അവർ ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് ഇന്റലിജൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് അവർ ക്രിയേറ്റിവിറ്റി ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓൾ ദ പോർഷൻ ഇസ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഐക്യൂ deviation iq means uh, it is the concept is given by the weschler deviation iq means the our intellect independent intellectual ability scores are taken into consideration for the analysis when this um, already the deviation score is uh, find out uh, this deviation iq means the comparative score of uh, comparable score of the individual score with the norm score norm score might compare ema namaku kittana score ne aanu deviation iq nu parayunnathu actually we have an independent iq score after the analysis of the test and this te- this test score is uh, not uh, considered to be the intellectual ability of the individual this particular score is compared with the uh, norm score norm score is already formed the test is uh, manual contains the norm score and then we compare the individual score with the norm score and there is a particular deviation iq is given on the manual and this deviation iq appropriate or corresponding to our uh, score is taken as the uh, deviation iq and depending upon this deviation iq our uh, intellectual ability is measured and uh, defined nammle adayathu already nammude age group il ulla oro age group il nammle normal thannittundav norm for manual il thannittundav appo nammude age group il ulla individuals inde score il thannittundav and deviation iq appropriate column il thannittundav അപ്പൊ നമ്മളുടെ സ്കോർ നമുക്ക് ഡാറ്റ കിട്ടി കഴിഞ്ഞു കഴിയുമ്പോൾ ആ ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ സ്കോറിന് നമ്മൾ ഏജ് ഏത് ഏജ് ഗ്രൂപ്പിലാണോ ഉള്ളത് ആ ഏജ് ഗ്രൂപ്പുമായിട്ട് കമ്പയർ ചെയ്യും കമ്പയർ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അതിനോട് നേരെ കാണുന്ന ഡിവിയേഷൻ ഐക്യു ആണ് നമ്മളുടെ സ്കോർ ആയിട്ട് എടുക്കാം നമുക്ക് കിട്ടിയ സ്കോർ അല്ല ഡിവിയേഷൻ ഐക്യു ആണ് സ്കോർ ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ എടുക്കാം ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഡിവിയേഷൻ ഐക്യു ഇസ് ദ ഡിഫൈൻസ് വട്ട് ഈസ് ദ സ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് അവർ ഇൻ്റലക്ച്വൽ എബിലിറ്റി ആസ് കമ്പയർഡ് വിത്ത് അവർ ഏജ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് That is uh, deviation IQ. This is deviation IQ. If you have 149, deviation IQ is 110. Then the US intellectual ability is 110. Then the US intellectual capacity is 110. That means that the average. Then the average is 110. 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 Excuse me, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ah, ma'am. Uh, interpersonal intelligence is a little bit. 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 ഇന്റർപേഴ്സണൽ <laughs> മുന്നത്തെ ചാപ്റ്ററുകളൊക്കെ സ്ലൈഡ് മാറ്റിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കാൻ എന്റെ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്ലൈഡുകളൊക്കെ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഒക്കെ മാറ്റണം കാരണം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ചിലർക്ക് കാണാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുണ്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു അപ്പൊ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഹോൾ ടോപ്പിക് മാറ്റിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കാൻ അപ്പൊ പ്രോസസ്സിങ്ങിലാണ് ഇത് ഫൈനൽ ആണ് ഇതിപ്പൊ ഇത് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാം ഇതിപ്പോ തന്നെ ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാം അതർവൈസ് ബാക്കിയെല്ലാം നമ്മൾ ഓൺ ഗോയിങ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ അതുകൊണ്ട് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾ വായിച്ചു നോക്കിയിട്ട് യു ക്യാൻ ഷെയർ യുവർ ആൻസേഴ്സ് ഓക്കെ ആസ്ക് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഓക്കെ ദെൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ടോപ്പിക് ൻസ് മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള കണ്ടില്ല 
The next one is in unit four, block two, creativity and problem solving. Is it visible? Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. It is clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, uh, okay. Uh, here uh, we are discussing about what is first one, uh, what is uh, creativity. There is a simple definition given by the Terence. Creativity is a process of finding the solution to the problem. That means when we are confronted with the novel problems, we find the different aspects of the uh, problem situation and then forming the hypothesis and testing the hypothesis and finalize, we conclude a particular solution to the problem. That is known as the creativity. And it depends upon our intellectual ability. That is creativity and intellectual ability is uh, positively correlated, but it does not ensure the intellectual ability. Does, uh, intellectual ability does not ensure the creativity. And then uh, the, there is a, some points, Newell and Showman and Simon, they define the uh, nature of creativity. Creativity is a novel, that means it's a kind of, uh, actually we are uh, respond to a particular situation no, uh, with the novel ideas. It is not a, a conventional process of or conventional ideologies are not used in case of creativity. It is a novel uh, exposure or novel ideas. And then second one is uh, previously accepted ideas are not used. And then uh, intense motivation and persistence is very important for creativity. That means if we are interested in a particular topic, uh, that help us our creativity, creative ideas, formation of creative ideas. And next one is um, we find out a clear cut solution to each and every problem which is uh, confronted with us. That means coherent, clear, and new way, way of uh, method of problem solving methods are adopted by us. And next one, Sternberg uh, reports about the five commonalities in the, in the research of creativity, especially the creativity producing, uh, focusing on the producing ideas and products and the domain, domain specific and domain general aspects. That means we. Uh, Finding or particular aspects of the problem rather than uh, dispersing out our attention, and then it is measurable. Creativity is measurable. How how uh, how far the ch changing is presented. Then next one is the uh, latest developed and uh, promoted, and uh, highly rewarded in practice. These are the main commonalities which are mentioned here by the Stanford. There are four characteristics of creativity. First one is in general novel ideas through inspiration, imagination. Actually, creative people brood over their thoughts for a long time in order to produce a new ideas. That is a, uh, it's a brooding or an, it's an, there is an incubation period for the creativity. And then purposeful activity. Actually, it is a purposeful activity, collecting the maximum information regarding that particular aspect. And uh, these uh, information are processed and analyzed by the yeah, intervention in their brain and produces something new or novel and it has a value in respect to objective standards of intelligence and next one Berto and Kaufman explains about the creativity actually it is a novel and personally meaningful interpretation that means it depends upon the individual differences as the individual uh, gain how the individual exposed to the different conditions and how the how he processed the different information which is exposed to that is there are two types of creativity are mentioned little c and big c big c uh, little c means the everyday creativity and big c is the imminent creativity big c is not seen in many people that means it is very a specific one uh, like bidovan he is a musical intellectual individual like, he is a, uh, so the big c is among them and then uh, next one is the uh, big c is einstein albert einstein sherikamana einstein the cherupagala nokkana nammi teacher einstein padikkanulla capacity illa nu parne Actually, there is a difference between intellectual ability and the intelligence. And then uh, the first one, investment and confluence theory. 
that was given by the Sternberg in 2006 has proposed. Uh, and then according to his theory, there are different interrelated sources which contribute to the intellectual ability and as well as the creative capacity of the individual. First one is the intellectual ability. Minimum intelligence is very important for our intellectual ability. Uh, many theories uh, explains about or many researchers explains about the, uh, the importance of the intellectual minimum intelligence for the creative people and knowledge. We have to collect the maximum information from our surrounding oh, world. I'm, that I'm, post I'm, Put your attendance. Okay. Let us come to the point. Slide visible or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma okay. 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 Style of thinking. Style of thinking determines our creative capacity. And then uh, personality. The creative people brood over their thoughts. They never interact with others. Actually, the intellectual ability, high superior intellectual ability, people with the superior intellectual ability has this skill. And that means they may never uh, respond to the three aspects of the situation. Actually, they brood over their thoughts. But the, at the same uh, characteristic style can be seen in the among the creative people. And then personality. It is uh, Next one is a motivation. Intrinsic and extrinsic motivation is why are very important for our creativity. And then environment. Fostering environment or supporting environment ensure the creativity. That means if we have this uh, some instinctual urges for the creativity, but the environment does not provide a chance to and uh, develop our creativity, that may hinder our normal functioning of our creative uh, developments. <clears throat> Next. Next one is a creativity requires a confluence of six distinct and related resources. These interrelated resources are ensure our creativity. Then first one is the intellectual skill. We are already mentioned about that intellectual ability, especially synthetic skill is very important because the we have to think um, over the be on the frame of reference of the society. That means every society imposes a frame, frame, and we always think. Uh, restricted our intellectual capacity or thinking capacity uh, beyond the restricted to our framework that is uh, that uh, inhibit or inhibit our intellectual capacity and also the creativity and then analytical intelligence it is a specific skill of the individuals to sense the problem and to find out the different uh, connections of the problem and then find out the correct solution depending upon the available sources and practical or contextual intelligence is a practical sense of the individuals. That means it depends upon the demands of the situations. The subject has to report the different types of solutions. And then knowledge. Uh, we, sometimes the knowledge hinder our intellectual and creative capacity. That means uh, if we for prior less or this one month's level, we will say that we will say that we that that's the inter our creativity. That means we have to always flexibility in thinking help us of creative to be creative. That means always we have to uh, open uh, open minded to knowledgeable act no, to knowledge. <clears throat> thinking style. Yeah, the creative people has their own uh, thinking styles that is uh, very different from our conventional style of thinking. Preferable style of thinking is the legislative style. That means we have to think over the different aspects without it restricting. Personality. Actually, we have to uh, we have a strength to overcome the any obstacles in the way of along the side of the um, others, and then willingness to take sensible risk. That is, adventurous people can make creative. 
that means willingness to tolerate ambiguity every individual has a uh, effort, has take effort to become creative and self efficacy there is some uh, self efficacy is a kind of uh, self confidence that has to be maintained throughout the process of uh, creative activities and the uh, next one is a motivation we are already mentioned about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation are very important it is focused basically it is very critical to creativity that means intrinsic motivation uh, help us to maintain or sustain the motivation level throughout the process then environment family atmosphere supporting environment some children uh, draw uh, their writings on the uh, wall some people or some parents hint not to write on the wall actually it uh, hinder their creativity uh, the raja ravi verma ka ningal kariya le raja ravi verma sherikum vanna drawing sadhi cheyidathu chamarile varichittayirun nammala kuttiyalla nammal chamarile varicha nammal samayikkavo nammal velli velli vela kodutha chamaru paint cheyidirikkunu ennattu samadhikkavo illa adu pole toys nashpicha nammal samadhikkavo illa that is actually it is a um, hinderance uh, in case in part of the uh, which is uh, imposed by the parents to the child actually is so supporting an environment supporting environment enhances the uh, inspiration level of the child as well as the it help the child to make creative <clears throat> then next one is a confluence confluence means the is a uh, the sum total of persons level on each component components that means is a part of internal uh, strength of the individual uh, <clears throat> there is a first one is a threshold for some components that means we have to maintain the strength of throughout the process the partial compensation interaction between the components partial compensation means the strength on the that is some uh, in case of motivation some forces may inspire our activity but some others hinder our activity we have to force out by the force by the uh, strong strengthful part, part it uh, may help us to reach the, the to create to become to become creative that means um, strength which is maintained by us is very important for creativity we take many uh, take pain or effort to uh, become creative there is uh, second one is interaction interaction means the high levels of component multiplicity enhance the creativity we have to think in different perspective uh, to solve the problem current problem that help us to make creative next one aspects of creativity here there is a de uh, definition which is given by the gilford according to him there are, a divergent thinking is very important for us to become creative divergent thinking means we have to there, there is a word uh, <clears throat> torrens explain the different six components of divergent thinking fluency flexibility originality elaboration abstractness of titles rest, uh, resistance to premature closure then fluency fluency uh, later on i give an ex uh, example for the creativity uh, fluency generating the large number of possible solutions that is fluency of ideas that is a fluency we have to generate many ideas without restricting these ideas some uh, may be uh, foolish ideas some others are strengthened we have to uh, generate many ideas and on the basis of these ideas we can find out the which one is most effective then flexibility flexibility means the shifting over to the different aspects of the situation and uh, depend uh, in order to face the problem there is a problem solving strategy is the best pro problem solving strategy that means the openness to every positive aspect originality seeing the unique and different solutions to the problem then the creative uh, people make it ge generate a possible solution that is very creative and novel and then elaboration that means we have to elaborate the every concepts which is formed by in our brain and this concept has to be uh, elaborated then it to help us to collect the different aspects uh, of that particular problem and uh, which it may also help us uh, to find create uh, to become creative and next uh, next one is abstraction of ideas uh, we have to go beyond the existing ideas the elaborate the ideas that is abstraction of ideas and then the systems to premature closure it is a kind of uh, psychological openness creative people always consider a variety of situation that is exposed to us and this what is any question okay process the information that is open minded 
and related to premature closure it is also a great openness to openness creative people should consider the variety of information while processing the information and there is a kaanunnathu ningge kaanathile budhimutta adinu njan onnu bold cheyan nokkitte oru shila kaanunnathu njan pradeekshikunu sherikkum mana it's a majestic arrangement you can take any two matches you have to form alternative blocks that's a question it's a creativity two matches uh, all the munne parnathil ella components nu ivide varunnundu you have you can take only two matches and these matches has to be uh, placed anywhere on the pattern in order to form the alternative blocks the answer is here the there is a block design actually we restricted <clears throat> Uh, that is openness help us to collect uh, the informations regarding this particular problem this openness uh, help us to understand which area on which area it is imposed adu namukku correct aayi manasilam all the creative aspects are mentioned on this particular problem and next one is uh, gaham wellas explains about the different stages of creativity preparation incubation illumination verification and revision preparation means trial and error method actually preparation means we are try to solve the problem we are confronted with a problem or encountered with a problem this problem have first we have to collect the maximum information regarding that problem actually we and uh, we <clears throat> do an experimental try out that means trial and error method we take many trials to solve the problem sometimes some trials may reach uh, error and then it uh, creates error and then it removes and then another alternative is taken into consideration it is a one conscious actually the subject has to be conscious about the problem before entering to the uh, actual procedures that it collects the factual informations about the problem that is a preparation stage and then incubation stage uh, when we analyze the what is the main problem which we expose it to and the collected information are uh, information are collected and we think over the different aspects or alternatives of this particular problem that is the incubation period we do, do nothing we think over the uh, problem itself that means we are uh, this process is going on in our brain that is incubation period Con it is a conscious effort uh, it is a conscious period as a conscious activity is going on <clears throat> actually it is a relaxation period we do nothing that is we are always concentrating on the what is going on in our brain and the next one is illusion illumination illumination is the aha experience that means we get a solution or cartoon la kaanunna pore or bulb nammude ullile kattu that is aha experience then we get a rapid solution to the problem without trial and error method actually it is a correct solution sometimes it is a correct solution otherwise we do this solution and then based on the incubation period we get a solution and this solution is try out in the next period and in, in this step the step we uh, <clears throat> try out the uh, already given solution uh, through illumination there is verification period is critically evaluate the solution if it is not possible we go we uh, we uh, come back to the uh, next stages of uh, stages of creativity <clears throat> then next one creative test it is a simple creative test uh, in 5 minutes hippopotamus there is a word hippopotamus in between can you see you have to find out the meaning okay you have to find out the meaning of meaningful words from the single word hippopotamus there is uh, i just mentioned what is must it is a simple meaningful word some and there are so many words can can be created from the single words hippopotamus that is our divergent thinking that means we think in different direction and then in order to get the correct solution of the problem okay that is divergent thinking it is very important for our creativity that is we have to think over the problem in different dimensions without censoring and with our open mindedness that is hippo uh, that is uh, creative and diver divergent thinking and then next point is uh, in 5 minutes we have to list out the what is what are the different uh, uses of paper clips we can find out it is that is our, it is openness open uh, creative test all are always uh, has a possibility to or opportunity to freely express our ideas 
uh, without censoring. That is uh, here the use of paper clips are uh, write down by the subject. That is the first, uh, next five minutes. And then after it, there is a coin problem. Okay. Uh, it's a coin. There are 10 coins just arranged in different format. And then this, uh, you can take any two coins and then this coins to be placed anywhere on the uh, pattern in order to form the six coins in a row. Actually, uh, we always think about uh, the coin, taken coin is to be placed on the, uh, as a single one. For a single one, I to place on the tendency of Kandava. That is a problem of creativity. Uh, we have to think in different dimensions. We have a restriction. We have a answer. We have a the answer is two coins are taken down the coin uh, and then one coin is taken and placed over the other one on the top of the uh, center coin and then the center coin consists of two there are two coins and these two coins share the same row uh, two rows okay upper six of then the row in share in that's all and then creativity and intelligence uh, what is the relation between the creativity and intelligence? There are different perspectives about the creative the relationship between the creativity and intelligence. Actually, uh, creativity, uh, the person has the ability to uh, faster um, skill, uh, faster processing of this processing skill and uh, reproduce the correct accurate information. And uh, that is the capacity of the individual, intellectual capacity of the individual rather than the creativity. And Creativity means finding the uh, new ways of uh, solving the problem. <clears throat> then Terman in 1920 found about the high, uh, the people with the high IQ were not necessarily creative. We are already mentioned about that Kanai Kunjiraman. Kanai Kunjiraman is an expert. Uh, he is very uh, creative people as a creative, especially the spatial intelligence. So the people with he is uh, high on uh, spatial intelligence. And then uh, sculptures are performed in the Varanalo. is uh, he is creative, but he is uh, it does not ensure the intellectual ability. And then Adwala or Trim, Namkaria, Namla, Arena, Alayalaka, Savar, creative very character, make a little creative very. That is the first point. And second point is uh, here is, there is an association between the psychometric intelligence and creativity yielded only a weak relationship. That means uh, many studies show that there is a weak relationship between intellectual ability and creativity. That means minimum intelligence should be, should be have uh, people with a creative, creativity. And then researchers uh, shows that uh, both the high and low levels of intellectual ability does not ensure the high intellectual ability and the low intellectual ability. Uh, Guilford suggested that there is a minimum level of IQ is very important for our uh, in the creativity. That is, uh, it is very sufficient. And then Hayes proposed that the alternative solution to the problem that is certification hypothesis. It's a, it explains about the different possibilities of uh, the relationship between the creativity and intelligence according to his uh, uh, theoretical aspects high levels of formal education is very important for our creative people to become the people become creative and academic academic performances is correlated with iq but the society simply denies the creative individuals of low iq that means the chance to express their talent adequately that means they cannot understand they can do anything but they cannot understand what is the demands of the society. It depends, they produce something, but it is not appropriate to the uh, demands of the society. That means a very important one thing is mentioned here. And there is a positive relationship. Uh, uh, all researchers say that there is a positive relationship between the creativity and intelligence. Minimum intelligence ensures the creativity, but the, uh, the people with the high intellectual ability does not ensure the uh, creativity. All creative acts require minimum ability to acquire knowledge and also capacity to comprehend, retain, uh, retain and retrieve the information. So, 
And then next one is the measurement of creativity. Uh, there are several tests are available to measure the creativity of, of the individuals. Most especially all the tests are uh, focusing on the divergent thinking. Expect the answer. Continue. 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 And I just mentioned camel. That's the first one, and mango is the second one. That is our creativity. We that means we uh, think in different di directions, and then we can find out the solution to the problem. This test of creativity. There are different tests of creativity. Torrance test of creativity is the first test. Wellash, Cogan, and Cogan test. Guilford's battery. And uh, Torrance test of creativity thinking that is the first one it is published in 1966 and re reform renowned that is revised in different times um, 1974 1984 and 1990 and 1998 actually it consists of uh, many it consists of many items this test is uh, translated into more than 30 languages actually this test is based on the guilford structure of intellectual battery intellectual battery uh, it consists of two parallel items, form A and form, a and form B. Uh, the test is administered. Uh, the time taken to complete the test is 30 minutes. It is a power test, power, no, speed test. Speed test means the restricted time limit is given. The subject has to complete the test within that time limit. Generous time limit is not given. But in case of power test, the uh, generous time limit is given. The subject has taken their own time to complete the task. There is no restrictions in the time in time perspective. Here, the each test is it is a speed test. That means the restricted time is given. Each test is expected to measure the fluency, flexibility, originality, abstractness of title, resistance to premature closure. And then 1990, Torrance deleted this flexibility scales from this test. And then uh, here, because it has a high correlation with the fluency, so fluency is a, uh, is um, revived and then the flexibility is uh, really deleted from the test and then added two more other courses uh, co creative potentials like abstractness of title resistance to premature closure and then what is the main criticism against this tct t t c t there are four main criticism first term criticism means the the response set might influence the results. That means the different order, uh, presentation of in different order may interfere with the creativity of the individual. That is the main problem. And then second one is that um, it actually it is an open-minded question. So the openness increases the possibility to um, report different types of answers. The creativity tester administer under the different conditions may give different types of answers. That is the main problem. Calculation is very difficult because of this difference in the answer answering pattern. And the next one is uh, uh, <coughs> testing scores are very difficult because of the ratings, uh, rating uh, given by the experimenter to each and every aspects of the or uh, aspect like items of the test. Then the structure of the test is inadequate, quite inadequate. It is also another problem. And then uh, that's all. These are the different types of tests. And next topic is problem solving. Problem solving means Skinner explains the problem solving skill. That means the overcoming the difficulties when we are facing, uh, uh, when moving towards the goal. That is known as the problem solving. Hinterend. Hint there are many hinterends uh, throughout the <coughs> uh, goal. Throughout when we are uh, throughout the uh, on the way on the on the way. Uh, to the goal, attain the goal. <clears throat> this uh, blocking or the barriers to be removed, that is a problem solving, is a removal of these barriers seen in our way. <clears throat> there are three aspects of problem solving, original state, goal state, person or, or operator, problem space and rules. 
then initial or original state is the situation that is at the beginning we encounter the problem and goal state is the final state and a person means the person who it uh, depends upon the personality of the individual and the problem space is the uh, uh, elements required for the problem solving skill and then rules are the detailed description of the rules and logics here there is a problem 2527 there is a rules is there is a rule 2 in a square plus 1 that is a second word second uh, letter letter uh, digit 5 <clears throat> and then 5 square plus 2 that is 27 that is a specific rule uh, is followed by this particular problem and then there is an initial state that is 2 and the end state is a end state should be find out and then there is a specific criteria and this criteria has to be followed when we are moving from the initial to final stage and then typology of problems uh, well defined and ill defined problems certain problems are very clearly defined it is easy to us uh, because we can find out the, the relationship in the different aspects of the problem because of the ill defined nature of the problem itself but in case of well defined problem sorry well defined problems ill defined problems they just not clearly defined so we cannot we cannot find out easily the what are the different aspects of the problem because of the ill defined nature of the problem these are the uh, uh, when it is clearly defined it is easy uh, to find out the solution without any distractions that's all categories of problem jim greno explains the different three categories of problem problems of inducing structure problems of arrangement slide that one problems of inducing arrangement problems of uh, arrangement uh, problems of inducing structure problems of arrangement and transformation problems first one is the problems of inducing structure here we are in the problem itself uh, um, left some cue clues that help us to solve the problem easily Uh, that means we have to find out which one, which clue is left out by the problem itself so the, the here we are find out the relationship between the existing problem uh, then the here there is a problem second one is uh, to be find out a b uh, c d in between m ignore the m and then the remaining one can be easily find out the, that is um, inducing structure a b c d then e alle angane alle b c d e f e f is the next one next one analogy of the problem car 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 wheel flower petal lawyer client doctor patient then the first one help us to find out the second one <clears throat> then solving analogies there are different skills are used by to solve the analogy first one is attribution discovery and coding comparing uh, comparing and coded yeah, at, uh, attributing and evaluating the attributes <clears throat> next one is the problems of arrangement problems of arrangement means we have to find the problems are given in a haphazard model uh, we have to arrange the problem uh, first and then find out the relation uh, relation and find out the uh, solution the it help us to uh, the problem solving is uh, at the sake of the insight insight is a sudden splash of information or solution to the problem then transformation problems transformation problems initial and final goal of the problem is in a haphazard model uh, we have to arrange it in a particular order and then we do help us to easily find out the solution to the problem that is a transformation problems and the next one is a stages of problem solving there are different stages of problem solving first one is a uh, preparation incubation illumination and verification the stages of problem solving is uh, similar to the problem solving stages in the creativity first define and understand the thing about the problem that means i identify the problem itself and understand in details of the problem and think over the problem itself <clears throat> and devise a plan that means incubation period that means we find out the different alternatives of the problem solution and that is uh, carry out this uh, solutions to the uh, current problem and then looking back uh, if it is not uh, clearly defined or if, uh, find out the solution we go back to the former stages of the uh, problem solving skill <clears throat> next one is the strategies of problem solving there are there are the different strategies algorithms heuristics mean and analysis working backward and analogies and what the alg algorithm means uh, algorithm means uh, it guarantees the solution that means uh, actually the problem the 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus extending 2s 
the, it is not easy to find out because it takes many time for a long time. Uh, it's a it converts into S2 into 5. We can easily find out the solution when it just converts into different forms. That is algorithm. Algorithm guarantees the solution. It is a different order of the problem uh, in order to reduce the time taken and also it uh, incre increases the easiness and simplicity of the problem. And then there are several uh, essential properties of the algorithm. First one is the steps of each step of algorithm must be easily like such. And the second one, terminate. <clears throat> the ultimate purpose of the al algorithm is to solve the problem. This is the most important one. And algorithm algorithm is very effective because it provides the correct solution to the problem. And then it is general. That means we can use this algorithm in different instances. And next one is the heuristics. It is a cognitive shortcut that might lead to solution. There's a rule of thumb. That means here there's a uh, problem. Donald, Gerald. Actually, D stands for F, uh, 5. That means A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E. D, uh, this, uh, D, is, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, D put on the uh, fifth position. That is uh, D equal to 5. And then find out the <clears throat> D plus uh, D equal to 10. Then the 10th one, 10th uh, letter is T. Find out the T. There is a different combinations of the same word, but uh, sometimes it may take uh, three years to find out the solution. Then heuristics help us to reduce the uh, time taken to uh, solve the problem. Heuristics does not guarantee the solution. That is the main problem. This problem cannot, this uh, particular strategy cannot be used in uh, another sense. <clears throat> uh, and then 25 into 25, 625. 5 into 5, 25. Uh, 2 plus 5, uh, 7. Then reduce 1, 6. Easy. We can easily find out the solution without taking the proper steps. Actually, it is a heuristic, but it does not guarantee solution to all, uh, some other problems. Uh, that is the main problem. <clears throat> mean end analysis. Here, the problem solver determines what the measure would reduce the differences between the given state and goal state. Actually, if the, for example, uh, the child get a grade, uh, grade A, uh, then uh, he, ha he wishes to attain the grade A. He uh, as <clears throat> instructed the, uh, his professor to find out how to at attain this particular grade. And then compare all other people so who get already won this uh, A grade. And uh, uh, based on this information, he find out the correct strategy to, find, to attain this particular grade. That is a mean and analysis. That means uh, find out the different strategy, find out and uh, these strategies are collected. And if he uh, determines which strategy is possible or effective for their, uh, for the attainment of the A grade. That is a mean and mean end analysis. Then uh, creativity is also, the uh, next point is creativity, uh, the problem solving is creating sub goals. Sub goals means uh, the whole goal, uh, whole problem is to be break down, broken down into different aspects. And then this uh, each aspects are, uh, these uh, sub goals are find out and then overall scores are uh, taken into consideration at the final stage. That's the creating sub goals. Large problems are broken down into different sub goals <clears throat> that help us to uh, attain the goal with, uh, with the maximum easiness. Then working backward. Working backward means working. Uh, that is uh, one of the most important approach which is attained by us. It is a non condition. Uh, first, we will For example, we will do a course of psychology. We will do a course of admission strategies. That is why we will the entrance test. We will prepare for the entrance test. And then, that is why we will do the entrance test. We will do the target. Then, after the, the goal is set, after that, the <coughs> means or strategies are taken into consideration and then uh, find, uh, try try out uh, for the uh, best uh, to uh, find out the best strategy to attain that mission that is a uh, working backward and then goal is a team and the final sub goals form that is uh, working backward next one is analogy analogy means using the already given experiences there is strategies of experiences we uh, when we confronted with a novel problem, we 
first used our previous experiences. That is analogy. And then what are the factors affecting the problem solving? That the, we move to the end of the unit. Effectiveness of problem solving skill is uh, based on the two important criteria. First one is the time taken, and second one is the problem possibility of getting solution. And then uh, there are different other categories, uh, factors which influences our problem solving skill. First one is the nature of the problem, degree of difference between the initial and goal state, perceivers, mental set, and functional fixedness. Nature of the problem means uh, every problem has its own difficulty level and the simplicity level. And uh, first we have to find out the size of the problem. Always we take uh, notes um, for the psychology and these notes has to be uh, very uh, write it down in brief uh, that they help us to um, read it out at the later times. Okay, that is the nature of the problem. That's the main problem problem strategy. Uh, that's a difficulty in uh, solving the problem. Nature of the problem. And next one, degree of differences between the initial and final stage. There is a disparity between the initial and final stage reduces the uh, capacity to solve the problem. That means uh, always in congruence, the subject, the goal state and final state, uh, goal or final state and initial state should be congruent each other. And then perceivers mental state, it is very important. Our internal and external sources are uh, preparing to uh, solve the problem. That is our mental set, the red, mental readiness to the problem solving. There is a figure. Uh, can you see? Can you actually the A, B, C in between the lines? Uh, one, two, three, four. We we have a mental set. That means we uh, count one, two, three, four. That actually the three is not there. Uh, it's being part of the B. One is there, but we does not consider the one. Line. One and decide elevation of the construction. That is the mental set. We uh, we form our mental set in order to read this particular uh, word, uh, particular number. Okay. Uh, the functional fixedness, it is a, uh, it is a resistance uh, or a tendency to perceive an item in only in terms of its uh, most effective, no, effective use. Here, the last uh, slide, uh, last slide in the Bhagavati. Actually, this is a um, one of the example of functional fixedness it is a nine dot problem. There are nine dots. You have to write down, uh, join these nine dots by using the four lines only. And the all the dots are to be included in the four lines uh, without taking the, or without lifting your hand. That is the main task. Should be joined with the four lines of the uh, Nine dots should be joined with the four do four lines without taking your uh, hat. Uh, can you join this uh, particular <coughs> dots? There is an answer. Uh, the nine dots are joined. Here we are always um, think in in the particular frame within the framework. Actually, the line is. Um, Beyond the framework, or the Kurchibang particular in the environment, Dylan. Namely, Prim E nine dots in Ulikonda, only the Noda Chindiga, that is functional fixedness. We have a tendency to restrict our thoughts into a particular stray within the particular uh, frame. Uh, that is our uh, important hindrance in case of problem solving and creativity. There is another solution to the same problem. The dots are uh, lines are beyond the framework or out of the framework, uh, but the solution is problem solved. Then the thank you all, whole topic is completed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You can share your uh, questions in, uh, at the interactive session. I share the very slides before it. Uh, I think you can understand what is the main concepts of cognitive psychology. Uh, there is no time to share, to ask, and to answer the questions. There is an interactive session. 
even though the center is not permitted to no come so i thank you all thank you for your cooperation Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You said it all very well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.